here's your host. He's a few no op short of an exploit. Hey, I just met you and this is crazy, but here's my IP and then map me maybe, Paul Asadorian. Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Paul.com Security Weekly. This is episode 296 for July 12th, 2012. We've of course got a fantastic show for you as always in the uh, couple of weeks prior here to uh, Black Hat and DEF CON and B-Sides. We're all uh, very excited about those particular conferences, of course. We hope to see all of our listeners out there. And please visit our table at DEF CON for a very special surprise, which came to me in the mail, much to everyone's surprise, chagrin, and shock and amazement. I I actually heard it made you scream like a little girl. It did. So if you want to scream like a little girl, all in good fun, come to our booth at DEF CON. Oh, heck yeah. Um, (laughs) It's frightening, isn't it? Um, we'll of course have t-shirts for sale, so please come buy yours. And, uh, we got toddler sizes, girls tank tops. Please, come by, buy a t-shirt. Um, what else do we have on tap for this evening? Register for offensive countermeasures at Black Hat. Last chance to sign up very soon. See the notes in the, see the links in the show notes for more information. What is that? Dude, you call yourself a Star Wars fan? Oh, boy. Somebody's sitting on the microphone again. <laughs> oh, I can hear it now. Yes, thank you, Chewie. Yeah, uh, episode- it could be, could be worse. This is, this is also this one. Oh. <laughs> you know what's funny is if you poke Larry in the belly, he makes Wookiee sounds. That's right. <laughs> so uh, Larry's, of course, here to my left making Wookiee sounds. Yeah, well, stop poking me in the belly. Sorry. <laughs> Jack Daniel is here. Where? Full of cheer and joy. That's right. Welcome, Jack. <laughs> full of something. I think that's the irony of it, is that you have the Santa Claus beard, which would make some people think that you're jolly and full of joy, but really, yeah. it's quite the opposite. Speaking of which, I, su- it is. I saw a picture on the internet the other day. Oh my god, I saw a picture on the internet that reminded me of Jack, and I'm going to see if I can find it. Wait, oh. the pictures? The internet has pictures? Yeah. <laughs> Allison Nixon is here with us. Welcome, Allison. Hi, everyone. I just woke up half an hour ago, and this is my breakfast. Beer for breakfast. That's right. I mean, that's Yay. really... It's a, it's a fruity beer, though. So yeah, it's, it's, like yeah it's like fruit. It's raspberries. It's like... Yeah. You want some yogurt to go with your raspberry beer? <laughs> raspberry yogurt beer. <laughs> what is that? Welcome to the internet. I'll be your guide. It does look like Jack. I think he posed for that picture. Um, <laughs> Dave the AV guy is here. <laughs> Welcome, Dave. Hello, everyone in TV land. Making it happen on the production Outfit side. Jack. Challenge. And coming to us from Sandsfire, it's John Strand, Darren Wigley, and Tim Tomes. Welcome, guys. Yay. Go on. Wow, there's like a three-part harmony there. Uh, <laughs> and they're all in the same hotel room. I don't well, want to know. They were really quick. It is in a hotel and it is a room, so yes. Yeah, it would qualify. We're That's actually true. in Kevin Johnson's classroom, and we're trying to think of something that we can do that won't get us kicked out from the Sands Institute. Rats. Well... <laughs> Maybe not that hard. <laughs> go Rats. big or go home. Rats. <laughs> That's right. Rats. It you know what you should Everybody do? Everybody on Facebook and Twitter, please do me a favor and wish Kevin Johnson a happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday, Kevin Johnson. Happy birthday. Yep. So be sure to send him emails. It's kevin at secureideas.net. <laughs> he wants lots of people to send him birthday wishes. <laughs> um, what was it? You could do the trick with the can that makes a gunshot noise. That was fun, though. But the problem is Kevin's not there. <laughs> no, Kevin's not here. That and the cans in Washington, D.C. don't seem to work. I think it's a oh, different tried it distributor already. of the gotcha. cans, but uh, they worked great in Orlando. Um, episode 300 of Paul.com Security Week will be recorded, of course, Friday, August 31st, in support of a cure for breast cancer. We will broadcast live all day, have special guests, and drink beer. Mark it on your calendars. Uh, in other administrative-related news, everyone, moment of silence for our Ning social network. Okay, that's enough. I think, <laughs> I think Ning may actually be sold for less money than Dig, although all of it might seem like pocket change. Wow. <laughs> I have never heard of that. Is it like some link aggregator site? Ning is like a, it's a social community of forums and blogs and videos. Okay. 
It was cool for a so, little. So I saw someone tweeted today that uh, Dig sold for point zero 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 five Instagrams. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Even less Instagrams could have bought you Ning. So it was really just a haven for spam, and it wasn't getting a lot of use. So we killed it, and I want to thank everyone for participating in that. But in the meantime, um, those of you that did register for a Ning account, I will send you one email. One email. Uh, because you were part of the Ning community, I will send you one email. I will thank you for that, and I will tell you that you can, rather than participate in Ning, follow us on Twitter. Paul.com is my handle. Uh, everyone else's handle is on the video. Larry's uh, Hackshore the Matrix. Yes. Jack underscore Daniel. StrandJS. Um, and everyone else's Twitter handle. We'll make sure we... Ra- Rasmus21. Carlos um, underscore Perez. Landmaster53. Anyone? Do we miss Agent anyone? Uh, Five? Nixon.Nixoff. There you go. Yes. Okay, so all of us are on Twitter. Um, the Paul.com crew has a Facebook account. If you go to facebook.com forward slash the real Paul.com, all spelled out, um, you can find our Facebook page, and I have been updating that more regularly. You can also add uh, most of us, including myself, on Google+. Plus. Yes. Uh, just search for Paul Asadorian. Uh, I'll have a good email account to be associated with that soon. Um, but find us on Google+. Plus. Uh, I've started updating stuff there. And join our mailing list, mail.paul.com.com. And uh, look for a newsletter mailing list coming out in the near future. So, yay. Enough administrivia. Let's get on with the interview with Ben and Lawrence from the Pen Testicles blog. Lawrence Monroe is a hacker, sprinter, kickboxer, six plate buffet smasher, hater of people, horrendous ped- pedant, pendant, pedant, pedant. Yeah, what he yes. said. That's Motivator of the Welsh, currently working for Hewlett Packard. Lawrence likes web application security, mostly ASP.NET automation, social engineering of young mums, I'm told, and putting ginger in kids' uh, headlocks. Ginger well, kids in headlocks. Ginger kids. Oh, I. Wow. Could I have screwed that up anymore? Dude, you need a beer? I do. I need several. <laughs> Lawrence, welcome to the show. Sorry for screwing up your intro. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it's anticlimactic, like uh, most things. Uh, I do. But yeah, thank you. Yes. Uh, and Ben Dewar Powell works for Digital Assurance, a London based outfit. His day to day shenanigans include tinkering, making gin, and trying to get Lawrence to allow him to break his new Samsung TV. Uh, their blog, Pen Testicles, is a soapbox for his scripting and automation musings. If there were a way to make and drink gin using only Ubuntu and a one liner in Bash, Ben would be the one to do it for you. Welcome, Ben, to the show. Hey, thanks very much. Yeah, that would go anyway. So, guys, I have to ask you, um, where did you come up with the idea, in the, especially the name for the Pen Testicles blog? Because I just love saying it over and over again, <laughs> Pen Testicles. That was testicles. Me. It was always something I used on, on tests, really, just to populate people's databases with, with shit, really. And um, I just got sick of Peter Wiener from Burp or stuff like that, and it was... Just uh, a funny name that I, I sort of thought was uh, nice. made me laugh, like on a on a daily basis, I guess. <clears throat> so, what are some of the uh, the research projects that you guys are, are working on and uh, posting to the Pen Testicles blog? You yeah, want to go spend? I'll take a few bits and bobs. Um, <laughs> I'd say there's not a lot of specific projects we play with. Um, a little bit, t- little bit of playing with stuff and just having a bit of fun, really. Um, the overarching theme, I guess, is automation of boring stuff, stuff you really hate repeating, repeating on tests every time over. Right. I, I don't know if you have it over there, but over here we have um, IT health checks for companies, which is a pen test rule I'm taken out of it. It's an audit. It's the usual stuff. I like you know. I think and that's a really great definition of an audit. It's a pen test with all the fun taken out of it. <laughs> Dude, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it's just you find yourself doing the same things over and over and over again. And if those could be chained up so they could be all hit up one go button, then that'd be amazing. And that's kind of the stuff that I want a state of where I want to get to really. Yeah. Now, some will kind of poo-poo automation and say you should do everything manually. But where do you guys make the, 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 the differentiation? Because a lot of the things you have on your pen testicles blog, I'm going to say that in every question I ask you, um, <laughs> is, uh, you know, as you said, uh, in the name of automation. Yeah. Um, so I guess, for me, automation runs up to 
collection. So grabbing as much. So if, if you're just grabbing the same information every time, so you're always going to do full full port scans. You're always going to want to look at the web web servers. You're always, there, there are certain things that you just do time in time out every time, and th those are the pieces that you want automated. So everything after that point, once you've got all the data, yeah, step by step, manual process. But the stuff that you're just doing every every single time, why not script it all up? Mm. A lot of it as well comes from uh, working collaboratively on on a lot of projects. So where you've got where you're wanting, you're covering sort of uh, ranges and uh, and looking at the same uh, sorts of things, but on a, a different range with two or three other people. Where you want to replicate and then use something like Dradis or something to pull in lots of information all into one place, or or looking at those sorts of things. All the automation uh, creates like uniformity really between what you're doing as well, and you. You, it's not completely taking away any sort of skill with uh, stuff like, especially with Nmap, um, setting all, all the all the options on there and and that sort of side of things. So nice. Uh, sorry, let me back up for a little while and have you guys uh, just tell us how you got your start in information security uh, as well. I kind of I jumped into the blog because I like saying fantasticals a lot. Um, and I enjoy uh, hearing your accent. I enjoy hearing your accents. I think they're awesome. So I hear you like touching pentesticles. I, I do, on my chin. So, wow! <laughs> how did you guys get your start in information security? You go first, uh, somebody. Okay. Um, well, I, I was basically doing uh, sort of uh, help desk monkey for, for for a few years, sort of managing a team first to first to third line sort of stuff. And then really uh, just got into security. I'd always been sort of playing at home with uh, breaking stuff, you know, taking the VCR apart and uh, playing with playing with my Amiga 500 and uh, Commodore 64 and crap like that and breaking stuff. And so it just sort of all stemmed from there, tried to combine it. Then I did a degree uh, after working for a while in... Um, uh, <laughs> in uh, cyber security and computer forensics, and then went on to do like a master's research. So it's, it's sort of. Are you, are you laughing because you said the word background. cyber? Is that why you're laughing? Sorry. Did you say the word cyber so you don't have to drink? No, no. Out? One of my one of my mates is here, and he's just pretending to snore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, basically from that, and then I started pen testing about three years ago. And um, yeah, it, it just grown from there, really. Awesome. Yeah, I guess I kind of follow a similar route in that I started playing around as a kid an awful lot and getting involved in um, things here and there. Um, yeah, just tinkering and seeing what I could get up with. Uh, I ended up doing, I was working in Sysadmin for a loans company over here, so the whole call center, Malaki and realized quite how tragic it was, um, what, what, all the stuff, how everything was set up there. Uh, so I started fixing all that. In the meantime, I, was, I went off and did a master's in forensics um, alongside it. And from there, I moved to London and joined a reseller and uh, started playing with security products, which is where I met Larry. Uh, that's kind of where it's all kicked off. Nice. Um, and our life has never ended. Yeah, <laughs> you guys seem very close. It's very nice. Very special. <laughs> Do you hold hands when you write blog posts together, or? Uh, oh, well, it's just oh, generality as a rule, but it sometimes progresses. We it depends. Okay, because I was going to say depends holding the, about, really. the hold the holding hand thing shouldn't be a problem. Goes to like anybody else here at Paul.com. We really adept at uh, typing and web surfing with one hand. What one hand typing? Yes. I mean. Um, um, yeah. What was I going to say? I Sorry. Uh, <laughs> somebody passed the post exploitation towel. Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so, what advice do you guys have, other than some of the stuff you might have mentioned, these you know, forms of tinkering, but what advice do you guys have for people who want to break in security, uh, specifically penetration testing? Um, in London, I'd say come to DC 4420. So, it's the local DEF CON chapter. Okay. And um, there's a lot of cool people talking Good there. Fun every month and yeah that's a good plug um yeah and just kind of get involved in the community and um yeah talk about stuff talk about what you're doing uh, get a blog out there get a podcast out there just anything just to show what you are and what you do and people listen a lot of the industry as well in the uk especially revolves around um uh, sort of check 
check status, uh, so check team member, check team leader and stuff. So a lot of the industry is based around those sort of qualifications. So, so uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Lawrence, sorry it's Lawrence, right? I'm, I'm getting you guys confused. Uh, Lawrence, uh, what is a check, check team member? You, you uh, so check is a government scheme um, okay. that's basically run by CSG and GCHQ, which are, are like the equivalent of... So I guess like NSA and FBI kind mm-hmm. of things for cyber stuff. And uh, they just outsource a lot of what the work that they do through uh, something called the check scheme. So everyone in the UK, sort of uh, a lot of the industry revolves around sort of their standards that they use for working. Gotcha. Um, so it's, it's really a routine. It sort of adds, it adds cash value to you and uh, sort of uh, benchmarks a lot of what you do. They, they have quite, uh, quite a couple of exams that you have to go through which are practical and uh, quite sort of time constrained so that so what are what are the differences are there between um doing security work in the u.s versus doing security work in the uk are there other like noticeable like huge differences that you guys see like when you talk to people who do pen tests and um assessments in the u.s versus the uk um, no i don't really have that much of a beta comparison with the u.s uh, like um we don't get hacked as much as HP Gary or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's a bit lower on the radar, but um, generally I, I've t- we've got, I work for HP and there's uh, another team over in the US, like uh, mm-hmm. we don't have much interaction with them, but um, I think a lot of the stuff that they do certainly is, is more focused around commercial clients and stuff like that. So I, d- I think the government stuff's a lot more sort of tucked away um, mm-hmm. is, is my impression of it, and um, I, d- I, I don't really know. Is the well, I mean, your your compliance your compliance standards are very different from those of the yeah, US. Yeah, right? you guys have FIPS and uh, stuff like that as standards to for things, and um, yeah, I guess uh, like uh, Sabane's Oxley and yeah. all that all that crap over here. It's we still have like PCI. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff's compliance driven. Gotcha. Um, like yeah, uh, uh, quite often compliance driven just uh, ticking boxes so I, d- I don't know how that compares to what you guys see yeah well I mean and you guys have Big Ben so we have Big Ben yeah, <laughs> yeah. and the queen <laughs> and the, and the, the queen. queen and her jubilee that's what his girlfriend calls him anyway yeah. <laughs> so uh, do you guys have any um, great penetration testing stories to share uh, with us kind of like the, the highlight reel uh, social engineering ones are pretty funny yeah, yeah, do you, uh, you should do tell you... one about your um, taking out every single printer in a printing company. <laughs> oh, very nice. Fucking Nessus. <laughs> <laughs> that damn tool took out all the damn printers. <laughs> Somebody yeah, unchecked the box. <laughs> Someone <laughs> unchecked the box that says, do not scan printers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, safe checks work. Yeah, and safe checks too. So anyway, so tell the story. Uh, no, that, that, there's not much more to it than oh, that, okay. than just uh, Nessus taking down a whole factory, printing circuit boards and stuff, and yeah, just getting the mm. shit kicked out of me by some clients. The, the, uh, yeah, it's, it's not that interesting, Ben, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, Different kind of printing. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I guess uh, some fun ones like going on social engineering in in banks and stuff like that. I can't talk too much about it, but um, stealing tills and... Uh, like all, all the old ladies in the banks making me sandwiches, and I'm fixing their printer while I'm t- stealing their uh, stealing their tills and serving customers and stuff like that, and scamming them for uh, in social engineering engagements, stuff like that. Nice. So you do also, guys, also do physical social engineering penetration testing stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just just anything really. It's quite broad. Anything you get stuck in, and uh, can either either be an expert or at least pretend in front of customers. Mm. Now, uh, do you uh, guys hold certifications, and what is your your feeling on certifications and uh, how they kind of play into your uh, career in penetration testing? <clears throat> yeah, right. so certs so are kind of important over here, I guess, in the pen testing kind of community. Get, well, let's say they're, they're important. The ones that matter are the ones that get you check status. Um, so that would be either working on the Crest scheme or working through the Tiger scheme uh, to get just to get one of the two tiers. Oh, um, yeah, exams. So you have your check team member equivalents and your check team leader equivalents, as you mentioned before, which you can get through either Crest or Tiger, and those are the ones that people really look for over here. 
And now, uh, and, so uh, the the last two you mentioned were what was it? Crest and Tiger. Is that what you said? Yeah, Cre- um, Crest and Tiger. So they're, they're, two, they're two schemes that are approved by CESG uh, to give you equivalency to become a Czech team member or a Czech team leader, depending on which exam you take. Uh, so they're the two boards, um, yeah, the two examining boards. They're tough old exams, um, but um, yeah, they're pretty much a standard over here. You kind of need to... Yeah, like, gotcha. To, There's a lot of uh, people who feel funny about certs, though, uh, uh, with a lot of the noddy sort of, uh, you get loads of vendor certs and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, feelings are on Sands, but I know a lot of the guys who really like the courses that, uh, that are delivered. Um, and uh, a, lo- a lot of people really like like um, the pen testing with backtrack stuff and the yep. OS- OSCP. Um, more practical stuff. I think if it's a bit of paper that's come from doing multiple choice exams or, or mm. things like that I, d- I don't know I, I think a lot of people prefer sort of practical knowledge over it it, it depends what you're doing Co- a lot of corporations they look for stuff like CEH which are a bit crap um, in honesty like um, really just covering off theoretical stuff it is not getting your hands dirty so stuff stuff from the US like the offset stuff is uh, is, is quite, seen quite well I think within industry and I, I really like that and prefer that sort of approach sort of trial by fire with a with a load of boxes and just go mm. um so guys tell us about hacker armory you guys uh hack armory you guys just took over that uh project so i definitely want to hear uh you tell us all about it in our listeners too so yeah the, uh, hack armory is um uh, a project where you can basically pick up all your all your tools uh from our website uh, in multiple protocols really it's just uh, the the two sort of key aspects of it and uh, the reason it exists are uh, looking at um so l- looking at uh, not being able to get tools uh, via certain protocols due to restrictions, uh, either within a network or, or, or whatever environment that's restrictive. So we d- sort of offer everything over SMB, uh, IPv6, um, TFTP, SVN. We're going to in- add in uh, Git coming up soon, um, Samba. So those sorts of things, just to get them um, and have a lot of old tools as well, sort of running on there. So if, if anyone needs a specific version of a tool, so there's different iterations. And we also chuck it into an ISO as well. And then um, you can download a whole ISO and just grab a load of tools as uh, as opposed to uh, using all the backtrack repositories or, uh, or whatever. It's, get, it's kept a bit more up to date. Mm-hmm. One well, of the main ideas is, I guess, if you're on a test and you want to test to see what you can actually get through to, or if you're there and you know that you need to get hold of something, um, we've kind of provided enough ways for you to be able to get, so if you, if you need to suddenly get netcat down, you can just pull it straight over to FTP or pull it straight and execute it straight from the run, from the run command. Um, and um, in, yeah, in addition to that, there's a couple of changes we're going to pull. I'm kind of tempted to start getting TFTP running over port 53, things like that. So, so we nice. start playing with getting it through as many files as we can. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, what measures have you guys taken to make sure the tools that you're including on that are, uh, don't contain backdoors? So uh, we, well, at the moment, we're hashing everything, so we, which we, I'm comparing those, comparing those ideally with the original... Gotcha. Site just so so that we know that they're decent, and we've we're had, also sorry, Ben. I was say we're vetting everyone that actually wants to be a, a contributor, and mm-hmm. just making sure that so we're not taking just anything off anybody. Gotcha. Talking, I'm talking to Excuse me. Uh, sorry, uh, Lawrence. Were you trying to say something? No, I was just going to sort of echo what Ben was saying and just uh, the, the contribution, everything sort of commit, uh, we manage it all via S- SVN. So uh, we've got sort of two, uh, a, lo- uh, a sort of uh, an offline database and a live one. So stuff doesn't get committed until uh, we sort of look at it. Anything that looks a bit suspect uh, or, or we've not pulled down ourselves, we'll sort of either have a quick look in a sort of sandbox or something like that. But to be honest, if, if, if we don't know what it is, we can't see sort of blog posts and stuff like that. We're not going to stick it up. And uh, right. generally, it's just maintaining well-known tools downloaded from well-known places that you, we're just comparing the hashes with and the, and the, uh, the box just being 
configured to to be static and not not allow to uh, any execution like someone sticks up web shells etc nice and uh, you've got a, a blog post on pentesticles.com uh, which describes how to uh, get all the software in uh, hack armory so um, yeah the- yeah the other post that I, I really liked that we featured here on the show was uh, we have port scans. What now? Um, I thought you guys did a great job of covering all of the different uh, shell scripts and shell scripting techniques to uh, carve and pass, parse out uh, output. And that's where I found, of course, the web scour script, and uh, which led me to a lot of ways to skin that cat of detecting web services and making screenshots. Uh, so much so that uh, someone may be writing code right now uh, as to another take on that particular problem. So I just wanted to give you guys props. I didn't know if you guys had anything else to add to, to your post or uh, tips and tricks for people who are um, looking to write scripts to do things like uh, identify web servers and take screenshots and such. Sure. Well, first off, I'd like to apologize for my unnecessary use of cats. It's a very, very guilty pleasure. Oh, no oh, worries. We've all yeah. been there. I like cats. So, yeah. So, yeah, I just kind of always tend to overuse it. Um, but, yeah, so I'm really... I, 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 so it was kind of a split of some of the stuff that I was putting together from parsing the XML and stuff that uh, Jeff, a friend of ours, was putting together from parsing the... Um, uh, the graphical output, and that's where, and it was—it's his web scale was his tool that he put together uh, just for, for grabbing that all off with no web photo. So I'm kind of really into parsing. I think XML, I like yeah the XML output a little bit better. So my kind of key tip is there's a little tool out there called XML Starlet, and it just makes command line parsing of XML so so easy. You can I'm figure sorry, it out. What, what's it called again? XML Starlet. Uh, XML Stylet, and is that is it Starlet? Uh, Starlet. Yeah, Starlet. Is that F-T-A-A. so? Is that a uh, is that written in a particular language or is it like a binary or? It's a binary. Just grab it from Ubuntu. Yeah. Uh, what app get install? Um, and it's just a little command line parser for XML. It's I use it all the time for pulling apart so and map stuff and sure check if you guys are familiar with that tool for uh, build audits. Uh, and anything that really dumps out into XML, you can just start carving it to pieces hmm. quite quickly. Oh, that's a good yeah, tip. I, I've tried to uh, parse XML from the command line, and that sucked. I wrote Perl yeah. instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need, you need something. <laughs> and I don't write Perl. <laughs> that sucked. XML land, right? Yeah. In, in addition to what Ben's saying with regards to finding the web servers uh, uh, with WebScour, sort of um, one of uh, another guy called KitKat actually improved um, the methodology of the um, screen grabs. I think he's using a slightly different uh different uh, methodology to do it as well. I can't quite remember how he was doing it. Can you, Ben? Uh, KitKat, how he together. So he's basically using, he's not using GNOME, like screenshot on there, um, and sort of Spider Labs, uh, Trustwave have sort of grabbed yep. onto this and created a, yeah, we talked an, about NSE, that. Uh, an NSE script that you can just <coughs> chuck in at MMAP, which will do it. Uh, automatically and pull back your screenshots. Yeah, we talked about that last week, and we've done some testing with it. Um, uh, I ran a yeah. yeah, I ran a segment where we uh, made some modifications to that, and then I continued working with it. And as I was kind of working through some issues with it, someone was actually publishing a blog post that talks about how to work through all of my issues with it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, why didn't you post that sooner, dude? Didn't you know I was anyway? Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, there's great there's great development work going on in that area. So I'm glad to see uh, people working on it. So, um, so if you guys had to tell a customer that their network security completely sucked, like what would how would you say it? And like what were some of the slang terms that you would use if you could like take all the gloves off and just like really tell them in like your fancy British terms, like how much their network so, sucks. Look right into the camera. First off, I'd have dueling banjos playing in the background as I was doing it. Yeah. Um, nice. So you have a little music. Very nice. music when you're fucking someone. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that your, like your romantic like, music? Like, like a little mood music. Yeah. <laughs> Squeal like a pig boy. Ha! <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um... But yeah, uh, so I haven't explained to someone that they're knackered. What was that, dude? Is that it? Setting it to music? Is that all you're going to tell them? Yeah. Pretty much it. Just, just Your network set shit. music. Suck it. Yeah. 
Do you, are there like fancy British terms that I can use with people? They're like they won't know what I'm what I'm saying in in like in in regular English. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thank you. <laughs> and oh no, do we have to get so into a you, discussion of of American English? And <laughs> so when you get really drunk with your mates, English. right? Do you how do you describe to them what the network was like? Fucking shite. <laughs> what shite. was that? Fucking shite. <laughs> uh, nice. Fucking shite. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's uh, that's enough of our um. Background says uh, he just came up with one. Do you pay your fucking admins with washers? <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I'm going to use it. <laughs> Washers are like the little rings that you get uh, put in between uh, screws and nuts. Oh, and okay. I thought it had some other kind of. No, no, no. It is literal. <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, Just trying uh, to find some Cockney rhyming you know, they're, slang they're, that they're might over hit. there from the land of farthings um, and shillings and whatever. So. <laughs> stuff, mate. Uh, speaking of. Uh, uh, the UK. What did you? We want to mention the the forty four comp yeah, thing. Yeah, we should. I meant to put that in the show notes. I totally okay, forgot. I will. I will get it there. But in the, <coughs> the meantime, um, the organizers of forty four con have uh, graciously provided a ten percent discount code for conference registration. Um, we'll put the the links in the the wiki, and I, I won't try to read it because it's like really long and has like some sort of hash at the end. So says your mother. Yes. Yes. But it has some hash at the end. Uh, but we'll post a direct link to that in the in the wiki, um, so that if you want ten percent off of uh, registration for forty four con, so be it. Thanks. It's in London, buddy. <clears throat> yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> we were there last year. It's great. Real oh, nice. Time to start a good conference. Yep. So, uh, are you guys attending this year as well? Yeah. Should be. Yeah. Uh, yep. Well, now you guys have an opportunity to get ten percent off. Well, will they have cleared everybody out after the Olympics by then? <clears throat> well, that, and they'll have hash at the end. I mean, what more could you ask for? Wow. Are we getting to Amsterdam for that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a trip to Amsterdam is what that is. Yep. Ben and Lawrence, thank you very much uh, for appearing on Paul.com. You can visit their blog, of course, at Pentesticles. What's that, uh, what's that site again, Paul? That's Pentesticles.com. Thanks, guys. Have That's a great night. Cool. Thanks, Paul. Cheers, Cheers. Thanks for having us. Bye. Cheers, mates. Huh? Yeah. Huh? See, I can speak to. Never mind. Yeah, you're afraid. <laughs> you guys proud of me? Amazing. No. <laughs> that was lame. Late I know. China. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. With uh, that, we'll take a short break and come back with a uh, feature technical segment for the show.